welcome to the talk. Uh, it's uh, going to get whoa, easier a bit. Okay, um, it's going to get a little darker in here as. Uh, we were just warned. Uh, the reason for that is, of course, we're using a dark, very dark slide theme, uh, which is actually our company slide theme. So that's just kind of how it is, and the lights are kind of washing it out. So enjoy the, ooh, enjoy the darkness for a little bit. Uh, you can have a nap if you want. Like we're not going to be mad about it. Uh, <laughs> I was going to make a joke about uh, it's great to see there's so many people attending, but now I can't see anybody anymore. So. You know, I'm just going to assume you're all still here. Uh, so the talk is uh, sneak ops getting users to use GitOps without even knowing about it. And my name is Eamon Ryan. I'm a principal field engineer uh, at Grafana Labs, and I'm joined here by my partner in crime. I'm Heavy Simon, or Heavy Simon. Uh, I'm a field engineer as well. The field engineering team, just to kind of um, get a notion of what that does, we support the solutions engineers or the sales engineers at on our labs, we ensure that uh, they are able to get the, the, the breadth and the, the technical depth that they need for some of their engagements. They know a lot about the, how the products are used, we know a lot about how the products are architected. We also uh, write workshops, we write enabling material, and we also uh, build and maintain the demo kits, and we'll talk about that a little bit now. So, this is uh, kind of, well, am I too close to something? I can't really tell. Is it you? Is it this one? Okay. All right, that seems better. Okay, so this is a very uh, basic view of the environment uh, that has mentioned called the demo kit that we support. Uh, it essentially is uh, a GKE cluster uh, with uh, a whole bunch of stuff deployed on top of it. So we've got a large uh, buzzing is really. Can we just turn this one off? That's off. It's off? Okay. Anyway. Um, so it's this large instance, it's got Grafana in there, as I'm sure everyone here is familiar with Grafana, maybe not familiar with all the other stuff it connects to, lots of people only connect it to one or two things, uh, but because we are Grafana Labs and one of the teams we support uh, is involved in uh, showing demos for what Grafana can speak to, we have it hooked up to literally everything we possibly can. So on the left side it's uh, Prometheus as well as all the other projects and products that Grafana has like OnCall and Mimir and Incident and Loki and Tempo and ML and K6. And on the right hand side we have uh, all these third party things that we can also connect up to uh, especially on like, like the enterprise version of our stuff like ServiceNow and Oracle and Splunk and so on. So it's a lot of things to, to connect to. It's a lot of, uh, a lot of work to upkeep and to make sure that all of the different demos and things uh, for everything are actually working all the time. And of course, one of the things that solutions engineers really want to do is demonstrate exactly what we can do with inside Grafana. So they've got a lot of dashboards. Um, now, as part of our role, we create all the data sources that they need, and we usually create a few demo dashboards that they can use as a basis for going forwards. And they do do this, but the problem is customers. Customers are always a problem, right? Um, and what they're going to do is say, what we want we want a demo of something that does this with this data source and that with that data source and let's show it all working together, right? So they take the data, they take the data source and the dashboards that they have and the speech and engineers start copying them so that they can tailor it for exactly what they need it to do, which is great. But they do it again and they do it again <laughs> and they do it again and all of a sudden we have so many dashboards within the Grafana demo kit that we're not entirely sure what's going on. We're, what is what is the golden dashboards here that they should be using? The solutions engineers start copying dashboards from other solutions engineers, so on and so forth and so on and so forth. And it really becomes a situation where even we have problems going through, you know, trying to figure out exactly what we should be keeping and what we shouldn't. And this basically this is how we feel almost every week. Just a little aside, this little emoji in the Grafana Slack channel is called Disgate. We also have a spot there and we write the emoji. The spot comes in and writes it built out of like nine smaller emojis, so it comes in huge, which is great. Works in every channel. Thank you. So uh, our plan for to, to solve this is to have multiple Grafana environments instead. So the first is a sandbox, complete anarchy, Mad Max, looks very much like the uh, except that you know, it's, it's intended to be that way, <laughs> instead of ha having evolved that way over the years. I must feel like I'm off here. Um, 
And then we have a second environment, which is our production pristine environment. And the way to keep it pristine is, of course, to not let people change it easily. So what we're going to do with that one is you know, lock it down, make sure that uh, like the, the SEs and the people who use the environment can't actually just directly edit stuff in there. So lock it down with permissions, make sure users aren't admins except for our team, and just make they can't just add whatever they like in there. And what we, what we want to do, and what you can do with Grafana, is you can feed uh, dashboards in programmatically, and we want to do that via Git. So that would require that uh, solutions engineers would file a GitHub PR uh, with the dashboards that they wanted to add to the Grafana instance. Sounds great, except for you know, Grafana is like, doesn't have a totally great flow for automating this in itself. You have to kind of you know, use the API or something like that. It doesn't really have a native integration for this yet. But in theory, we thought this would help, and it would give us a nice, cleaner setup. However. So the challenge is that we, as the admins, want to use GitOps. It's fairly obvious. Uh, it makes it life easier for us. It's very low touch. We can ensure that we can get stuff in without having to do a lot of work ourselves. But the problem is, a lot of our end users, because of the range of different uh, sales practices that we have and the engineers that actually go and talk to customers, not actually everybody knows really about GitHub or Git or GitLab or the source control systems that we're using. And because they're constantly in meetings, they don't really have time to actually go away and learn all this stuff, all the processes, all the flows that we want them to use. And of course, the lack of use of it and the lack of most of the majority of the solutions engineers actually putting PRs in or thinking about this means that the mess remains. It just continues. We end up in a situation each week where we have to go in and start pruning dashboards, looking at data sources, seeing exactly what needs to be there and what needs to come out. And we actually have an additional problem, which is that as we, um, as we, as we add more Grafana instances, so we've been going from a single centralized one to having one in the US and one in Europe and one in uh, in the uh, Asia Pacific region is that, well, the SEs are adding dashboards in, in the main one and then they're like, oh, it's not in the other one, it's not in the other one, so that they're not really propagating around. And if they had done the Git process, well, maybe we could do that. But as had said, it's not usually in their day-to-day -day job to play around with Git and so they never really get used to the process. So, so we're gonna, ooh, so we're gonna Git ops it all. So we're going to use some fairly standard tools, but we're going to go into what those tools are and a little bit about what they do, just so we can kind of set the scene for when we do this demo. So the first is Grafana itself. Grafana obviously has many products. In this case, it's the beautiful dashboarding tool that everybody knows and loves, um, but it also has a full REST API. So that REST API acts with JSON data. It allows you to upload dashboards, it allows you to upload data sources. It allows you to pretty much do whatever you want with any of the, the, the resources that Grafana supports. It's full CRUD operation supported. Um, but in this particular case, we're going to use it to upload and download dashboards from one Grafana instance and upload them into our production instance instead, where they will be uh, basically locked out so that people can't start mucking around with them. So we're going to run a little daemon in a pod on our Kubernetes cluster. It's going to talk to our Wild West anarchy uh, development system where the solutions engineers are actually going to put the dashboards that they want to store into uh, our production Grafana. And it's going to send, obviously, the dashboard JSON back to that uh, daemon running in the pod. So uh, another component that we're using here, which I'm sure lots of people are already familiar with because it's been around for years, is Terraform. So briefly, if you're not, it allows you to do infrastructure as code. Potently, so that means you can rerun things and it won't, you know, stomp all over everything you've done. Works off of desired versus actual state. And there is a Terraform provider for Grafana. And one of the basic uh, uh, resources in there is the dashboard resource. So you can add dashboards, no problem. Uh, you can remove dashboards. We've actually put, uh, as a side note, a ton of dev effort into that provider this year. So it does like way more stuff than it used to do. But obviously, it's one of its most basic features is put dashboards into Grafana. Um, so that works really well. It will mean that you know, as, as we try to push dashboards into Grafana, it will only add in the ones that it needs to versus uh, ones that are already there. So it just works on like the diff kind of basis. So we have our stuff inside of Git. Uh, Terraform is going to react to that with, with an extra tool uh, in play, which we'll get to in a second. And it's going to push the dashboards into the production Grafana uh, that, that landed in Git from the sandbox Grafana, from the other component heads he's just talking about. 
So this is where Atlantis comes in. So obviously, Terraform doesn't run by itself. Uh, we're going to store these dashboards inside Git, uh, GitHub in this case. And what we actually want to happen is whenever a PR is created, and the daemon itself is going to create that PR for us, we want to ensure that A, we can um, verify the dashboards that will need an approval process from somebody that is responsible for the production environment. But when that, when that approval has been given, we want to ensure that we can actually do something with it. So Atlantis is actually a way of allowing you to run Terraform via Git pull requests. It's a, a very um, a fully fledged system. It allows you to do various things such as, you know, only uh, apply uh, Terraform when something has been approved, you know, clean up on uh, an emerge, all of that kind of stuff that you need for a, a, a GitOps workflow. So the general idea is that we will have our dashboards in uh, GitHub. We uh, will create a new PR from the daemon that's actually doing all the work, uh, pulling these in from our uh, development Grafana. Uh, it will get approved. Uh, sorry, the, the plan, the Terraform plan will actually be uh, run at the point where that PR is created so that we can actually uh, assure ourselves that we're not going to break anything if we go ahead with actually merging it. Somebody will then come along and approve it, having looked at the dashboards. You'd be amazed when you look at dashboards and the JSON that was produced by Grafana day in, day out for two and a half years. You can actually start seeing into the matrix just by looking at a dashboard JSON file, uh, which is quite scary, really. Uh, and then once we have approved, we're going to apply the Terraform that goes along with it, and that will get us into a position where we can merge against our production instance. And uh, one other small thing on, on this side. Uh, if people were about were thinking of asking the question of, hey, why didn't you use the Terraform controller in Flux? Uh, I didn't know that existed until this Tuesday. Uh, so <laughs> we'll, we will probably go and look at it. We were at, Git, at GitOpsCon on Tuesday. We're like, oh, that looks useful. We should maybe look at that. Um, but yeah, literally didn't know it existed until this week. Um, so another little piece of glue we're using is GitHub Actions. Uh, so it allows you to really easily run little workflows uh, inside of uh, GitHub. Uh, things that can be triggered by PR creations, comments, all that kind of stuff. Uh, for us, we were just using it as a little bit of glue uh, because of the way that Atlantis currently works. It actually requires you to comment on the PR to, uh, to allow it to actually proceed. But we wanted that to happen in a slightly more automated fashion. So we have an action that comes in and like automates that like a little bit for us so that we don't have to uh, do it quite uh, in as manual a fashion. All right. This brings us, oh no, this is me again. Okay. Uh, <laughs> uh, by the way, all these little pieces of, of artwork we've been showing in the background are just fun bits of, you know, all the different AI tools for generating art that you've seen around lately. So we use them to ask it for things like <laughs> GitHub Actions, which created a very strange image here with like a fox wave. And uh, this is what it came up with for Atlantis, even though it very much looks like Rapture from Bioshock. But kind of okay with that, honestly. That's pretty cool. Uh, this is one of the ones we got for Sneak Up, so we got this very shaped character in your data center, so I thought that was perfect. And there's a few more of them as we, as we move along. Okay, so our solution is uh, we take our, I should to move closer because I can't even read the text now. Uh, we take our sandbox Grafana here, and down here we have our solution engineer, and he's going to go in and add a dashboard, uh, which will have like a bunch of characteristics, as, as you might imagine. So it'll have an ID, uh, it'll have a uh, tags associated with it. And that dashboard, what we're going to have them do is save it into a very specific folder, calling it the magic folder. Doesn't really matter which folder it is as long as it's the one that we designate. So they save it into a specific folder. Uh, so there you have the dashboard and it has specific tags on it. Then our component, this uh, dashboard daemon or the sneak ops daemon as Heads was describing, looks very shady, more AI art, is going to come in to the Grafana API, look at what's in that folder, pull that out, and file it as a PR into GitHub. And that means that in GitHub, we now have a folder structure uh, that includes dashboards that are being pulled across from the sandbox Grafana. And this works for as many as we need to. So multiple folders, multiple dashboards, doesn't matter, it's okay. Uh, then, as we mentioned, Atlantis is gonna come in. Atlantis is a Terraform runner. It's gonna then create the plan to run this against the production Grafana. And then that will allow us to get as many dashboards in as many folders as we actually want. Don't, uh, yeah, as many folders as we actually want. And uh, that will mean that we will have a system where the, all the person does, the SE in the bottom left, is save the dashboard they want into a specific folder in an, like just has a particular set of tags and then off it goes. But Heads is going to explain the whole, the, the, the custom bit in more detail. So we keep talking about this 
daemon that's going to work with dashboards, but what actually is it? So this is what our sneak ops daemon actually is. Uh, it's written in a language that rhymes with Toad. I'm not proud of it. It is going to be written in Go or Rust. Um, but what it basically does is look in this golden folder in the development environment, and every time a new folder appears, uh, it goes away. It looks at exactly what the folder is. It looks at the tags that are attached on the dashboard to uh, determine the folder in the production environment that we're going to put it in. It looks at a version tag as well. It's very important that we don't allow SEs to create new dashboards that are going to overwrite production instances that are actually already useful. That would get very messy very quickly. So it does a load of different checks to ensure that it's actually safe to provision this dashboard to the production environment. It raises errors. Uh, if any of this information isn't there that it needs or something is going to go wrong. And then if everything is all right, it will raise a PR for it in our GitHub instance to ensure that we can then go through the, the entire GitOps flow to ensure that we can kind of get that into production as well. If there's an author tag on it as well, it will also ping you. It works with both uh, logging out to standard out, which gets picked up by Loki, oddly enough. Uh, but we also have a Slack integration so that uh, anybody that's interested can come along and look at the Slack channel where all of this work is going on and see if their dashboards have thrown an error or if they're actually working. So Ed is going to switch over and show us a demo of this. Uh, this is not a pre-recorded demo. So uh, fingers crossed and toes crossed. I am praying to the elder gods that everything is going to work. Um, so in this particular case, you can see that we have both our development environment, uh, which currently has a couple of folders, but we have our Wild West folder here where maybe a solutions engineer is working with an amazing demo dashboard. We have our production instance as well, which has a few different folders that people are using at the moment for demos. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to go away and uh, open my dashboard. doesn't really matter what the dashboard has in it. But I'm going to save this now into the folder that we use to actually pick up any changes to go into production. So let's move that into our sneak ops folder. And let's save it. Now what's going on at the moment is uh, the way that our dash daemon actually works is it polls every 10 minutes. Um, we don't want it to poll every 10 minutes for that. We would go way over time. So uh, it's currently running in a little... Uh, demo cluster here, you can see that we're running Atlantis, we're running our daemon, we're running a few things that we need for observability, and we're running both our Grafana development instance and our production instance as well. Hopefully by the time we go back to Slack, he says, of course, we're going to hit the either, we're going to hit 30 seconds either way. There we go. So um, actually the Dash daemon has told us that we can't provision that. We actually need some more tags that we don't have, the prov version and the prov folder. I've not told it where to put the dashboard and I've not told it what version it is so what I need to do is go back to my dashboard now change my tags we're going to remove the tags that uh, dash daemon has put on there that's actually to help us so it will help both us and solutions engineers determine why the dashboard couldn't be provisioned and it will give an epoch date there to tell you when it happened so let's remove those it's dark of course so I can't see properly my screen but we're gonna we're gonna put that in a um, let's call it amazing demos folder we're going to give it uh, a version of one. So that will allow us now to hopefully try again. Dash Demon should come along shortly and it should pick up the fact that we want to put it in production in that folder with that version. Uh, I could whistle the girl from Ipanina. I'm hoping that this is actually going to go quickly. Hope everyone's holding their breath. I am. There we go. So now Dash Demon has picked this up. It said, okay, yeah, you've given me everything I need to actually provision this folder. And it's also very handily given us the link to GitHub where the PR has been created. So if we go and have a look at that, uh, obviously we can't show you our production or demo environment. We can't also show you the GitHub repos that we're using for this. So I've just set something up in one of my own organizations. Um, and what's going to happen now is Atlantis is going to run the Terraform plan. It's going to ensure that it can actually do something. Uh, this should, is usually fairly quick. Uh, it shouldn't take too long, he says. There we go. It has actually run. It's just GitHub didn't refresh. So we now have uh, an output here, and uh, Atlantis has run the plan. Terraform has told us exactly what's going to change. We're going to add a new dashboard. We're going to add a new folder. Uh, and at this point, we're in a good position for somebody who maintains the production environment to come along and approve the changes. Button boy, do your thing. Yeah. <laughs> I get to press one button. That's my con contribution to the demo. This usually wouldn't allow you to merge either. It's just because uh, it's a private um, repo that I'm not actually paying for in my organization. So I haven't been able to turn branch protection on. Uh, Eamon has come along and he said a few things in the comments. GitHub Actions has now uh, discovered that there's something that has uh, 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 approved, uh, sorry, an approval has occurred on the PR. 
Uh, because of that, it's now gone along and said Atlantis apply. So Atlantis is now going to do its thing. It's going to apply Terraform on our PR, which again, hopefully should not take too long. It hasn't. There we go. It's done it. It's applied our dashboard changes. It's uh, closed our branch. And if we now go back to our production instance and take another look, we can see we have a Golden's dashboard. And our dashboard has been moved across fully along with all of our tags. Now the SE can come along. They can demo this dashboard. And we know we're in a good position. And it's a dashboard should actually be there. Of course, if anything had gone wrong, what I could do is I could have gone into Grafana and you know, we're Grafana, so I've logged it all up. There's metrics, there's traces. Uh, but that's essentially the demo. Sorry, we couldn't actually find the clicker because the table is so dark. <laughs> so, uh, quick recap. So, our environment, big shared Grafana instance, tons of data sources, tons of integrations, lots of users using it. Uh, our whole SE team are maybe the primary users. There's dozens of them, uh, less than 100, more than 50. Um, but it's actually open to everybody at Grafana, and it actually gets used by engineering teams, it gets used by uh, customer support teams, it gets used by professional services, it's used by everybody. So lo lots of people in, in there. So the situation was, we have Mashes Afterall Sprawl, we have lots of duplicated dashboards, we have dashboards that basically don't work anymore, there's a real danger of somebody going and saying, okay, I'm going to show you this lovely demo, and then nothing works. And we have a lot of old dashboards, and it's just not a situation that we can continue with. So, like I said earlier, I plan to have multiple Grafanas, at least one sandbox one. It's going to be, it's intentionally a big giant mess, that's okay. But we have a nice clean production one, and we want to provision things across via GitOps. But the challenge is that a lot of our users don't actually use Git on a day-to-day -day basis. So we need to ensure that we did something that would allow them to use the tools that they know and love very, very well, obviously, to do something that allows us to still type an over overview and uh, kind of get some view of what's going on, but also that is very minimal our part to actually do all of this. And our solution is, well, we'll build this tool, let them save dashboards to a magic folder. They don't ever have to even open GitHub or Git or even know how to run Git commands. Dashboards are pulled out by the Grafana API, uh, gets committed to a Git folder structure. Uh, Atlantis runs a Terraform uh, script that I wrote that is able to iterate over that same folder structure, so a folder of folders of dashboards, and just run that in a loop and just drop them in exactly where they need to be. So let's do some wrap-up. Should you do this? Uh, so this is a custom solution to a specific problem that we had. This is something we were actually rolling out for real in our internal environment for, for those groups. Um, we're not necessarily saying everybody should do it exactly the way that we did it, uh, but this is intended to be an example of, say you have something and you want to get opposite, but your users are not really Git uh, savvy. This is like an example of what you could do. As long as the tool that you're trying to get ops has some kind of API in a way of programmatically speaking to it, you could do something like this, even if it wasn't exactly this. The tools are there. You just need to stick them together, do a bit of work, bang your head on the wall because it didn't work 17 times, you know, all that kind of stuff. But what about maintenance? Well, oh, excuse me. <clears throat> well, as you can see, we tried to pick some off-the-shelf tools to make it very easy. The only thing we had to do was write a daemon to ensure that we could actually work with Grafana API and create the pull requests. And actually, having looked through GitHub Actions a bit more, I've slowly been learning it, um, I think we can do an awful lot of it without actually having to have a daemon itself. So if you can pick the tools that you need you know, and configure it in such a way that you're able to maintain it with, low mate, with uh, as low an effort as possible, then actually it probably is a really good thing to do. Uh, as Eamon says, if you've got users that are very high level, they don't actually know the tooling underneath, this could be a really, really good way of ensuring that they can kind of self-regulate what they're doing. And on the future roadmap, so uh, this is also partially an answer to the inevitable question of, is this open source and can I have it? Uh, we didn't actually make it public at the moment. We're like kind of on the fence about whether we should, but the, it's not because we don't want to give it to people. It's also because there's actually, there's actually significant effort going on in the like official Grafana code base to uh, improve the situation of uh, Git integration to a large degree, um, which uh, is, I'm going to be very loose about this and say, should be something next year. Uh, Easy on. <laughs> <laughs> Don't hold me to it, but yeah. Um, so there is like official work there, and like uh, we're a little like hesitant to like just hand it to people because then people will start using it, and maybe that's awkward when the new version of Grafana comes out. So we're like, uh, I don't really know what we should do there. 
Um, but within the tool itself, we were thinking of doing things like adding uh, data sources and some yeah, other bits. Yeah, I mean, one of, the, one of the things, as I mentioned earlier, is you, you get very good at reading JSON, but <laughs> that's, that's good if you've been reading it for a long, long time, but not so good if uh, you know, you're just doing something else and you're there just trying to main, admin and maintain what's going on. So we're going to run a Grafana instance that actually spins up the dashboard as the PR is created and gives you a screenshot. There's little nice bits and pieces like that that we're just going to start to add that makes it a lot easier. So it looks like we have five minutes left, and that's actually perfect. Um, so I'll leave this on the thing. This is the raising the session QR code and Twitter links. Uh, but we have a couple minutes for questions. I was going to say tw Twitter links at the moment. Let's see how long we, la we last on Twitter. Is anybody have any questions? There you are. If you, if you remove something from the magic folder, does it also remove it from the production environment? So does it also do like a Terraform destroy of the dashboard? Uh, not at the moment, but that is, again, something that we're, we're kind of thinking over the future. Um, uh, to be bluntly honest, one, part of the problem that we have is uh, that we have a very small field engineering team. So we try and do things like this in bits and pieces when we're not talking in depth to customers about Tempo, Loki, or, you know, Mamiya, that kind of thing. So it is a, there's a lot of things on the roadmap, but unfortunately that's not one of them that's there at the moment. There would be, wouldn't be that great, uh, that much work to add that bit because because the actual provisioning piece of it is effectively Terraform, if we just change it so that if something is removed in a certain way, it removes it out of the Git folder, well, Terraform will take care of it. Without running a Terraform destroy, the apply will recognize that it's not there and will actually delete it. So like half of it is done by, deep, by, by nature of it being Terraform. Uh, so you guys showed. Uh, sorry, go ahead. Yeah, go ahead. Sorry. Oh, that's right. Yeah. <laughs> so, so the question is the sorry the the statement was. The tool creates the PRs automatically. Will it update the PR if they then update like the dashboard because they did something wrong? Yeah, it will. So if you're in a, uh, if uh, the if the PR is still open at the point where somebody comes along and they actually change it again, uh, the polling will actually go and look at all the PRs that have been created, and the team will go, okay, well this has changed, the version number has gone up, and now I'm going to essentially update what we've got here, do it with the tags, and ensure that the plan will run again, so that we're not in a situation where maybe somebody else has come along at the same time, done the same thing. If, again, this goes back to checking to make sure there are no conflicting versions with the same folders, the same dashboards, etc. I saw your hand up. I knew I shouldn't have said polling. Um, so, hold on, I'll, I'll, I'm just repeating the question for everybody. Um, so you, we have a daemon that polls, and then the question was, have we thought about enhancing it to support webhooks on top of that? Oh, right, so webhooks from Grafana to call out when a change happens. That's a really good question. It is a really good question. I think it, we, it has actually been debated internally before. Um, I honestly don't know what the situation is. So, I mean, Grafana slash Grafana issues, please. <laughs> I have heard people ask for a custom web from Grafana several times, but I don't know what the official answer was on it so far. But I bet there's an issue already there. For I wouldn't be surprised. This person way over here. Uh, is the mic going to work? We have time for like maybe one more question, I think. Uh, all right, one second. If, you, if you're quick, we can maybe do two. Hurry. <laughs> Yell. Was that a question or a statement? <laughs> I didn't. <laughs> Okay, I think I understand. So you're saying, have we considered doing it in cross-plane, so using like a, a Kubernetes CRD for applying a Grafana dashboard? That would be neat to do, but no, we didn't, we didn't actually look at it. I have like 
that would kind of fit, I suppose. I have like weird thoughts about crossplane and like it's pr provisioning against stuff that could technically be outside the cluster, and you're kind of adding an extra layer in here that I'm not sure is like the complexity is worth it in some cases. But it's a good question, and we didn't really look at it yet. Okay, last last one, real quick. Last question. So, uh, yes. So in the, <laughs> it, it kind of works. Yeah, in the PR, you were doing a terraform apply, kind of at the same time with the uh, emerge the, the default branch. Do you run into any situations where maybe an apply happens but the merge doesn't, or you merge without the actual apply? So that's a good question, and at the moment, no. Um, although, ideally, what we should be doing is not applying until the merge occurs. Yeah, the, the way that Atlantis seems to work is that you comment Atlantis apply, and then it applies it, and then the PR is still open, and then you're supposed to merge it afterwards, and it's kind of weird, because you sort of feel like you should merge it, and then that should result in the apply, but it seems to be just that's the way Atlantis works. I wasn't able to find if you could reconfigure it to work a different way. That's also why we had the GitHub action that runs, that comments Atlantis apply for us when you approve the PR. Uh, so we kind of stuck that in as a, as a bit of extra glue. Now, maybe Flux's Terraform controller would actually do this in a better way. We won't know until we try it out. But at the worst, you know, we just create another GitHub action that says when a merge occurs, you just run a, a, a land supply. We could we get probably one more. So, try yeah. We're getting extra time for a question. Oh, crap. Uh, sorry, how do you manage all changes to production Grafana? Because in this case, you would get a you know huge difference when you would try to apply changes for like. So if somebody you're saying if somebody changed the dashboard in the production Grafana, yeah. so they can't because we're literally disallowing them from doing that. So the, like the only people who could do it would literally be our team of four people because we're we'll be the only people with permissions to do that. If that was to happen, uh, I guess you just delete it out of production and just repush it. From the but obviously, Telephone's going to provision everything again. The thing about Grafana now is from Grafana 9, we put in a very, very detailed, fine level grained access control system. So we can actually give permissions to lots of people to do everything they need to do, but not edit the things we don't want them to edit. So actually, Grafana has given us net. Thankfully, Grafana now has the ability to do all of that very, very easily without us having to worry about it. I forgot this is 35 minutes, not 30. <laughs> Any more questions? Yep, one over here. Shout. Uh, yeah, uh, I'm just curious, uh, what, what do you really get out of uh, Atlantis versus just, say, running a terrible apply? What do you get out of running Atlantis instead of just running Terraform apply in like a CI? Yeah, yeah. I mean, uh, we, we got CI pipelines that run Terraform applies uh, for a similar thing. Uh, I'm just wondering if Atlantis, what's it was quick. It was quick and easy to set up. Like, well, no, so the, the other thing that, that you're getting from not directly running it automatically in a CI is you get to see it before it runs. So it comments in the PR, shows you the whole plan, lets you see what the diff will be, so that people in our team can go and look and say, oh, it's going to do this. That looks OK. We can let it run. Instead of if you run it in CI, it's always assuming everything is OK and everything may not be OK. Something, something weird could be happening, and you, could, you, could, you might never see the diff, and all of a sudden, Terraform has wiped out every dashboard you have. So it's kind of so you can see what it's going to do and save yourself, hopefully, from some kind of destruction. <laughs> Come talk to us after, but uh, thanks very much, folks. Thank you.